Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the afternoon presentation of um, building proficiency at the novice level from one word responses to functional chunks. And um, I have put together some ideas for novice level, uh, very simple activities that you can share with your instructors or if you're an instructor that you can uh, use, uh, use yourself. These are some basic ideas. I don't pretend to say that I have collected all kinds of brand new ideas, but basic ideas to help us build proficiency among our Star Talk programs. And they're also some of my very favorite ideas. So um, are you ready to start with me? Yeah. All right, let's, let's go. I um, already talked to you about the fact that this will be on the Star Talk website. And uh, right now, I'd like to get you active right away. Uh, those of you that have been at any presentations I've given before will know that I like to, have, uh, to do this at the beginning with a partner A and a partner B. And I usually ask the partner A to be the person with the longer hair and the partner B the person with the shorter hair. So it can be on your left or your right, doesn't matter. But uh, one of you has to be A and one of you has to be B. So please decide who will be A and who will be B. Okay? All right. Okay. So, partner A, partner A, would you raise your hand so I can see you? Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Partner B, would you raise your hand so I can see you? Okay. Usually the men end up being partner B, especially if there's no hair. Okay. So, um, let me tell you one other thing. I have a bell here, and uh, as I get you in and out of activities, I'll ring the bell and I'll raise my hand. And when I raise my hand like this, what I'd like you to do is the same. So can we practice that? Okay, Helena rings the bell. And so that uh, I can get your attention back to me. Are you ready? Okay, partner A, you've got your first task. And um, this is it. Um, you are going to read the enduring understanding or the big idea for this uh, presentation to your partner. Okay, I think you should do that again. One more time. Communication. Okay. Partner B, please tell partner A. I really like the way you read that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Now, partner B, please read to partner A the uh, focus question that I have for this workshop. Okay. So, uh, partner A, please tell partner B, I think you read even better than I do. Uh, just want to go back to this, uh, this uh, activity. I'm calling it tell your partner, and it's very simply that uh, you tell your partner what it is your teacher tells you to say. All right, it's not like turn and tell where, where uh, people are talking and it can be on anything, but this is very, very structured, very structured and very safe because the teacher gives the language that um, the students are to say to each other. And it's a way of very quickly getting kids using chunks of language. For example, uh, oh, let me give you an example in, in German, okay? I'm going to say something to you. Uh, oh, I can't say Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Sag bitte zu mir. Guten Tag, Helena. Guten Tag, Helena. Guten Tag, Helena. Hallo, Helena. Okay, jetzt bitte sag zu deinem Partner. Guten Tag, Partner. Nochmal. Guten Tag, Partner. Ah, sehr gut, sehr gut. Und jetzt bitte sag zu deinem Partner. Partner, du bist intelligent ja intelligent ja intelligent sag noch mal zu deinem partner du bist intelligent 
Und jetzt sag zu deinem Partner, Helena ist super intelligent. Okay, back to English. Um, so you, I just wanted to have you do it for a minute in a language you're not familiar with so that you know you get the feeling and we know we're all intelligent, right? And of course I was lucky German has some cognates, intelligent, intelligent, it sounds almost the same. But uh, so how would this work? Uh, you might, partner A might say to partner B, ah, well why don't you just say it? Um, uh, open your book to page 22. Okay. It's uh, 10 o'clock. It's time for uh, it's time for uh, recess. Okay. Uh, it's bathroom break time. Are you getting the idea? So it could be whatever you want to say. It could be, oh, tell your partner, I really like the way you read that, as I just did. Or read this with your partner, or do this with your partner. But it's always very structured. And the teachers that have uh, used this find it extremely helpful. Because why? It gets the kids talking, gets the kids talking in a safe environment. And when you're talking to me as a whole group and you said, guten Morgen to me, that was great. But then when you said it to your partner, didn't it feel more social? Please say yes. <laughs> it you know feels it feels a little bit more social. Okay, so um, let's um, look at the can-do statements. So, partner A, would you read the top can-do statement? So, by the end of the workshop, probably by the end of the first few slides, you'll be able to explain the concept. And partner B, would you read the second can-do statement? Okay, and if you're not a regular instructor, you can certainly share that with the teachers with whom you work. All right, so uh, please tell your partner this. <laughs> okay, so let's check it out. So what are functional chunks of language? Um, they're memorized and unanalyzed phrases of high frequency. So using a chunk of language in a predictable context like, how are you today? when you don't know that R is the verb and you is the pronoun and how is the adverb, you just use that chunk or me hago, me hago, <laughs> all right, <laughs> me hago, right? So may I go to the bathroom, me hago to the bathroom? So that idea that uh, we, we learn language that way and we don't always segment those pieces. We be, uh, as we hear that chunk more and more, then we begin to segment. I notice that in my own, I've been working a lot in China and I'm beginning to hear words in China now, in Chinese, and I couldn't hear them before. I'm beginning to pull out segments of language, just the same as uh, children when they're, learning, when they're learning their first language. And uh, so why do we need functional chunks? Well, to motivate language acquisition, uh, to be scaffolds, because if I can say it to my partner, uh, and I've said it, my teachers asked me to say it many times, I start to own that phrase, uh, and I can build proficiency. Uh, it's a scaffold for building proficiency. So um, Fisher and Fry, uh, they talk about language frames, which are a, a form of functional chunks, say that they can help stimulate academic talk in the classroom, and also help gauge students' understanding of concepts. And uh, another point that I think is important, oral language is very important because oral language paves the way for the development of literacy, right? Now, in alphabetic languages, that's a pretty easy thing because uh, if you can uh, say the word, you can make some kind of connection to the way that that word looks uh, in print. If in a non-alphabetic language, it's not so easy because there isn't always that direct connection between the print and the word. But we know that to build any kind of literacy, oral language has to come first. So before you can read anything, be it alphabetic or non-alphabetic, you have to know the word and you have to know how to say the word. And so um, working with functional chunks will of course also build literacy and helps kids to begin with interpersonal and presentational communication. And um, let's kids use language functions. I have a list here, uh, it allows students to practice language functions. I have a list here of five language functions that uh, are 
some of the five basic language functions that we use. And there are actually hundreds and hundreds of them, but you can, many of them could be categorized under these five. So as I flash them up, would you like to, would you kindly read them out loud? Okay. Socializing. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to talk at your table uh, with your partners at the table and say which of these five do you think we use the most in an education setting? Which of these five do you think we use the most in an education setting? Okay, how many of you said exchanging information? Okay, that's the one I would pick, but you're not wrong if you picked another one. But that's the one I would pick, exchanging information. Do we do a lot of socializing in our educational settings? I don't, th you know, do you think so? In the classroom? Okay, I, um, I was thinking we never take the time for, well, it, well, if we mean hello, goodbye, uh, etc., depends on what we mean by socializing. Okay, um, um, the one that I and of course expressing attitudes. Um, these chunks of language could be any of these functions. I like, I don't like, uh, and so on. Uh, getting things done. Um, well, if partner A is telling partner B how to do something, we could be getting things done. Um, my favorite for uh, beginning level language is the last one, establishing and maintaining communication. And I'm going to give you some examples of that. So we start out by letting the kids um, uh, be, be able to make their way in the language. Uh, one of the examples would be teaching them how to say, huh? What? How do you say huh in Chinese? How do you say huh in Hindi? I don't know. OK. Oh, it's the same in Chinese? How do you say what? Or, you know, sometimes it's interesting. I speak German and Spanish, Spanish with a German accent. And um, I find that when I don't understand something, I go to Spanish. And my brain goes, como? My brain just gives me Spanish when I, when I don't get something. And so I think it's, it's great to have those kinds of words and to teach the kids those kinds of words. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so how do they work in the first language? Well, little kids. Um, uh, I, I actually mentioned this before. They hear these segments and then they start figuring out. They hear these chunks and they start figuring out what the pieces mean. And may I go um, changes to may I go. And uh, many names. So partner A, would you read the, the first group of names? Yeah, so functional chunks, prefabricated language, lexical phrases, formulaic speech. I had a friend, well, maybe this shouldn't be on the video, and a friend who said, don't use that word chunks. It reminds me of, of, of throwing up. <laughs> so um, I, uh, you can choose the, the name you call it. Uh, partner B, would you read the other ones? Okay, so that's the idea. We're stockpiling these phrases, we're stockpiling these sentences, and we're able to use them uh, later on as we, as we build proficiency. So obviously, it's oral language that I'm talking about. Um, and um, oral language is very important because when kids use the language, no matter in what way, they process it and it's at a, a deeper level than if they're just listening. Correct? Correct. And um, they have to be... <laughs> They have to be actively involved in a non-threatening uh, social environment. And look at these babies. They are starting early uh, to communicate. And um, kids push themselves to higher skills. They push themselves to higher skills when we make them talk. And when they find they can't say something or they don't know something and they want to communicate, they will try to find out. And uh, this is um, uh, actually uh, research from regular classrooms, but I think it also applies. 
uh, to, to what we're trying to do, and that is the evidence on using student talk as a mechanism for learning is compelling. In classrooms with higher rates and levels of student talk, more students excel academically. And of course, more students will get to language proficiency the more opportunities that we get them to talk. And it's amazing. I, I have the good fortune to work in many classrooms, but I still see the case where teachers are speaking the language 50% of the time and speaking English the other 50% of the time. And I say to them, if you're speaking the language 50% of the time, what percent of the time will they learn the language? 50% of the time. And so um, just very important uh, for, uh, for the proficiency building piece. And, oh, this Vygotsky quote, let's read it together. By giving students practice in talking with each other, we give them frames for thinking on their own. And uh, so if they've said things enough, um, they will begin to think on their own. And here I have an example of, uh, this actually came from a grade four, uh, and I will tell you what's here, from a grade four, a group of kids learning French, and I think the Spanish kids might have been in grade six. But can you tell what the unit was? What was that thematic unit? It was about animals, right? But it was more than that. It was about endangered animals, exactly. And so the kids in the French class made posts, made buttons, and this button says, save the tiger. And the kids in the Spanish class made posters. This poster, uh, this still blows me away and I get goosebumps whenever I look at it. Uh, no soy un abrigo, I am not a coat. And uh, I've used this many, many times because it is so powerful. This student had that frame, had that chunk, I am, I am not, and used you know, complex thinking uh, even though still at a very simple level of language. So these functional chunks can lead to quality, no, to higher level language. And um, this again is from general education, but, um, and I think that we are much more, we are much better than general education at giving the kids time to work with each other and to talk with each other, but it's still sobering when you look at it. And that is that in a whole group a work uh, with doing exactly what I'm doing, teacher talking in the whole class, doing it, uh, and independent seat work, kids working on worksheets uh, uh, were 91% of the day, and uh, learning activity with peers were 4.8% of the day. So we just have to up that. And I think we do a much better job in language teaching, but uh, it still is sobering to see that this still is the case uh, that happens uh, in education classrooms. So. What are my underlying assumptions? Um, before I go into the activities, I just wanted to make sure that you knew, that I knew, <laughs> that uh, we're, we're focusing on the standards, we're focusing on the Start Talk principles for effective instruction, we're uh, not leaving those out, we, they underlie what we, it is we want to do, and um, the whole idea of all of the teaching and learning process is based on on um, these three uh, items. So first one, um, comprehensible input. What does it say underneath? Meaningful and interesting. And by meaningful, I would like to say, I hope it's deep and rich. I hope it's a thematic unit that is deep and rich and that isn't just a story about a cat jumping out of the refrigerator and scaring somebody. Okay, I hope that it's um, a meaningful language that not only builds language but also builds concepts. And so, uh, and of course, um, how do we make input comprehensible? Uh, it takes us day and night to do that with pictures, with actions, with manipulatives, and so on. Ich könnte hier den ganzen Tag stehen und ich könnte mit euch ein bisschen schön sprechen, aber es wäre vielleicht ein Problem, weil ihr würdet mich nicht verstehen. Yeah, was that comprehensible? No. And so people sometimes say to me, I speak the target language, but uh, I was just a talking head, and I didn't do anything else to help you understand. Uh, intake, of course. So we, we make sure they understand, uh, and then, well, actually, we make ourselves understandable. This is on us, the comprehensible input, and then on them is the, did they take it in? 
and how do we know that they took it in? And then lastly, what do you think is the last piece? We've got input, we've got intake. What do you think is the last piece? Oh, you're so smart, exactly, output, okay? Uh, and negotiation of meaning, and those fancy words mean that I say something to you, and you say something back to me, and we talk back and forth, and we clarify what it is we're talking about. And it could even be negotiating of meaning if partner A asks partner B, do you like da da da? And partner B says back, yes or no, at a very, very, very basic level. Um, and of course, the, the, the underlying assumption is that we are focusing on developing proficiency. And um, that, in a, that um, we're accountable not just to the learning, but also to the proficiency goals. And that we know we have set a target of, of performance toward proficiency. And we know where we're heading, and we know that we have to spend uh, a lot of time uh, doing oral language activities so that they can build and perform toward proficiency. And um, the idea is that these functional chunks will provide scaffolds that bring kids up to the next proficiency level. And uh, we're focusing in this workshop on the novice level. Um, but of course, any time that I have kids say sentences, I'm already building toward intermediate, all right? Whenever I have kids say sentences, I'm, al I'm already building toward intermediate. I wanted to show you this. This is from the Memphis City Schools. Uh, Lisa Villarreal shared this with me, and I just love it. This is um, the proficiency cone that she uses with the, the littler kids. Uh, their, their program has Russian, Chinese, Japanese, and Spanish uh, at the elementary school. And so the, um, the green the, uh, is novice low, the blue is novice mid, the purple is novice high. And so she's teaching the kids, uh, or the teachers are teaching the kids, what do you have to do to move from the green level to the blue level? What do you have to do to move from the blue level to the sentence level? And the kids actually articulate it. I have to build and use um, words and phrases. I have to build towards sentences and so on. And I just thought that that is just really a, a, a powerful image that, that you might like to see. So we want to stretch their speech, right? We want these chunks, and then uh, we want to have chunk built on chunk built on chunk. So um, how do we stretch their speech with transition words so they can, they can string chunks together? and um, here are some, um, uh, uh, where was that first one? Okay, stringing the speech together. So um, any of these, first, second, third. Uh, just, or just the word and. I like apples, and I like oranges, and I like peaches, but I don't like, um, what don't I like? Uh, I don't like pomegranates. Okay, so that idea of teaching the kids that they're going to say more than one thing. They're going to add on to it, and they're going to um, try to come up with uh, putting these chunks together in some way. Um, so, um, or as I just said, I like apples, but I don't like pomegranates. And I will have these phrases in the, uh, in the handout that I send you, just so you're, but go ahead and take the picture. Get me in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> now she did. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course I like apples. <laughs> of course I like whatever it is. And so on. Easy, right? An easy way to build proficiency, just to be thinking about um, not just one phrase at a time or one sentence at a time, but having the kids get in the habit of layering their sentences. So ah, what are some sample uh, functional chunks? Uh, and uh, here's a continuum of language activities that shows um, this idea. So we start with patterned, okay? Practice activities, chants, songs, stories. Can you think of anything else that would fit in that pattern? Games, uh, where, where they're, me they're memorizing some kind of a pattern and it just comes out, uh, I, I, and games and rhymes. Controlled, structured conversations, partner work, uh, where it's the choices are limited. It's not just open-ended, talk to your partner about something. 
uh, but it's you know a very structured kind of exchange where it's uh, the kids are not thrown into an ocean of language, but they're thrown into a little wading pool, and they can they can figure out where it is they're going. Language frames, skits, and independent, open-ended conversations and presentations. Well. We actually can get kids to do this, but only with memorized language, and o only after we spent a lot of time um, at, at these levels. So I'm going to spend some time uh, working with the patterned and the controlled kinds of activities. And start with um, the first uh, very simple uh, kind of functional chunk, and that's teaching kids strategies for conversational management beyond more, beyond huh or what. <laughs> So uh, let's read these out loud together, okay? I don't understand. Would you read that, please? What did you say? That's a very good one. How do you say, hmm? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so kids going home uh, and their mom or dad says, what did you learn in school today? I don't know. <laughs> but you know, actually being able to say, I don't know, or uh, I don't know how to say that, or I have a question, but you know, so they actually, actually can, can, uh, can say something. And um, in a minute, I'm gonna ask you to add to this list. There's um, the next, uh, so the first one was just strategies for conversational management, so they can manage their way around the classroom from day one. Okay? And passwords is something I learned 40 years ago from Professor Constance Knope at the University of Wisconsin. And um, she taught me this, this gimmick. It's this absolute gimmick. And the idea is that the kids learn a phrase and they have to say the phrase in order to do something. Maybe they have to say the phrase before you let them out of the room. Okay, and I remember years ago when uh, we started some immersion schools in Milwaukee, and I was working um, in, in those schools that I helped to start, <laughs> and we would make the kids say the password before we would let them have their lunch ticket. All right, so uh, we use it as a gimmick, okay? But, uh, and we had one every week, a different one every week. Um, uh, MisCositas.com has a collection uh, of those on their, um, on the website, that's Lori Langer de Ramirez. It's got, uh, this, these are in English, but she has them in 10 languages. She has them in 10 languages. So uh, if any of the StarTalk languages are missing, we need to make sure they get up there. And uh, I do want to tell you, I do not have all the StarTalk languages represented in my, um, in my presentation, so I hope you'll forgive me for that. Uh, much of it is in English so that we can all access, uh, access it. Um, and uh, some is in German and Spanish, but um, th I will make sure that, that we understand uh, what's going on. So here's some passwords. I'll help you, that's very nice of you. Hello, how are you? Uh, my teacher's name is, close the door, just you know anything. So um, what I would like is right now, if you would just take a moment with the people at your table or with the people next to you, what passwords would you teach? Uh, or what would be some, either it could be strategies for conversational management or phrases that you would definitely want the kids to know uh, as, as you're beginning your uh, language program. So could you just take one minute or maybe two minutes and, and uh, brainstorm what might be some uh, phrases that you would like the kids to know? Very good, very good. Uh, let's, uh, let's share a little bit. Let's find out what did some of you say that you would add. So would somebody be willing to share? Oh, we've got one over here, very good. Nihama, siya siya. Oh, just how are you and thank you. Uh, okay, um, so that would be the first thing that you would teach? Okay, yes. Um, I might say tell the students in Chinese, 我不明白, or 我懂了. First, I don't understand, and the second one, I know now. Oh, I know now, a different one from the ones that we've had up there. Other ones that you might, uh, you might teach. Yes. 
Um, I would teach one um, like, Mujhe pani chahiye. I want some water. I want some water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or uh, did I have? May I go to the bathroom up there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, okay. No. You know all of those. You know may I, all the may I's. I think I might have them in the next chunk for of language ladders. Uh, other phrases you might teach. Yes. First thing I will use. Ma uh, ismak. What's your name? And oh. he need to respond. Ismi. My okay. name. Okay. Mm. So he can communicate right. with other students. So right away. So again, when the parents ask yeah. them, what did you learn today? I learned, uh, what's How your name, et cetera, that they have something that they can, that they can say. Okay, um, let's go on to language ladders, which um, I also learned from Professor Knoop. And the language ladder is the same idea, but instead it's a collection uh, all around the same topic. And, uh, and the idea is that it actually, um, well, what's this one about? It's French, but I bet you can figure it out. It's, it's um, praise, uh-huh. Ex, I don't know French, but I can do it. Excellent, génial, magnifique, and, and so, ooh la la, <laughs> and so on. All right, um, and this is a um, pocket chart which says, I'm very, estoy muy bien, I'm very well. Estoy bien, I'm fine, estoy así, así. Uh, I'm not, I'm mal, I'm not so good. Uh, I'm very bad, I'm angry, anyway. Uh, statements about uh, all related to feelings, and um, uh, this one is really looks like a ladder. A ladder. This one was done as a ladder on a pocket chart. So ladder meaning you teach one phrase, and then you keep adding on, you keep adding on, and you actually can hang it from the classroom or post it in the classroom. And um, uh, these, this is not an example, but um, this one is an example of having a little picture right next to it that gives you the meaning, so that as you look at it, you really do understand. Um, so, darf ich bitte Englisch sprechen? What might that be? May I please what? Uh huh. And may I? What about Wasser trinken gehen? What do you think that could be? Yeah, drink. May I drink water? But auf die Toilette? <laughs> no problem, right? <laughs> and meinen Bleistift spitzen. Meinen Bleistift spitzen. <laughs> okay, so the kids are learning these phrases and they can access them. Um, this one I like because it's, it's teaching gradations of saying something and um, not just leaving it at one phrase. I think one of the things that we tend to do is the kids know a phrase and we never go away from that phrase. Uh, we don't expand it. Um, and uh, so, may I go to the bathroom? Will you permit me to go to the bathroom? Uh, please permit me to go to the bathroom. I need to go to the bathroom. And it went on to, it's urgent that I go to the, there were like four more. I just, I just took, you know, took a couple more. But that idea of, you know, ah, okay, I've lear been learning this language for a while, and I can say, may I go to the bathroom? Now I'm going to learn another way to say it, and I'm going to learn another way to say it, and so on. Um, and this one, um, the, if kids are working together, teaching them the phrases that, uh, that they would say uh, when, they're, when they're working with each other. So how do you say in Arabic, what a good idea? Did somebody hear that, huh? Fikra gayida. Okay, say it again. Fikra, fikra gayida. I like that. How do you say it in Russian? What a good idea. Anybody Russian? Say it, oh, we better get the microphone over to you so we have it. That's great. <laughs> but I want to make him run. Okay, how about Hindi? Oh, that was easy. Okay. A couple of other languages? Any other languages that we haven't heard? What? In Chinese? Okay. Again? All right, very good, very good. So um, teaching them um, how to say these phrases and have, having them um, have some kind of, a, of a, uh, a way to remember them. So putting them together and chunking them together as a language ladder helps. Um, and this is um, really not a language ladder, but it's that the idea of the language of learning. And at first I thought that this would not apply, but it really does. Because as you look at those words in the, in the third column, um, these are the kinds of things that kids need to do when they're doing academic tasks. And why, you know, why can't we use the, that same kind of language? The first step is next, the last part is, um, 
these are different from each other because this is important because so if I teach the kid that chunk this is important because okay as a chunk like me hago, okay then they can say this is important because a very simple sentence and we can then you know scaffold them as they're as they're building their language uh, I agree with this I disagree with this and so on so just that idea, just these ideas are, are, are fascinating to me. Okay, um, I would like you to uh, actually right now take a moment to write a language letter, okay? Just either with your partner, with yourself, with the people at your table, take a moment, about two or three minutes, to write a language letter. And uh, but the reason I'd like to do this is because so many of us are very creative and we may come up with some ideas that you might ev not even have thought about. So if you would take about two to three minutes to write a language letter. And remember, what it is, it's a, it's a collection of phrases around a topic. OK. Okay, thank you for coming back to me. Uh, there was a, oh, there was a question about the email. W what table has not had this yet? Oh, lots of tables, so we'll take it around that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, there were a couple of questions. Any question you want to ask me about that? She just asked me a very good one. What do you do when they don't, can't read it yet? Well, then you just teach it. You just teach it orally with a visual, with a visual clue, uh, cue as to it, uh, what it looks like. When you think about that smiley face one before, um, but you give them a, a, a clue to the meaning. You try it as many different ways as you can. Okay. Let's say we write it in the way. Yes, that would be fabulous. Yes, that would be wonderful. In fact, that's what Chinese teachers have to do. Uh, to start with, before the students know, uh, know, know the characters. Can we hear a couple of your language ladders? Did we have a good one here? Okay, we just need the microphone. Oh, it'll take a minute. Okay. Uh, okay, swapping the microphones. Yeah. Okay. That's why I love to get, because the creativity that's in this room is amazing, okay? I'm giving you some ideas that are coming through my brain. They're certainly not new ideas or mine, but all of us here together, wow, we could have liftoff, because we are very creative. Okay, where is it? So, so we're describing food from wonderful to, you know, a little bit less than desirable. So we start, 人间美味, uh, 好吃极了, 好吃, 还可以,马马虎虎,不是很好吃,不好吃,难吃,难吃极了,难以下咽。Okay, so can you give us an idea? So first is the like, taste of heaven. Oh, right? taste of heaven. And then it progresses to, oh, it's okay, and it's, it's hard to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, because there's so much culture that goes along with that. And, and you know what? Of course, this is a powerful way for culture. Why haven't I said that? Yes, it's powerful for culture uh, because you can teach cultural phrases and cultural, cultural ways. Thank you very much. Um, who else would be willing to share? Yes, there we go. So we are doing adjectives related to eating. So, kana hai. I want to eat. Mujhe khana khana hai. Then, mujhe abhi khana hai. I want to eat now. <laughs> mujhe achha khana khana hai. I want to eat good food. Then, mujhe bara baje khana khana hai. I want to eat at noon. Mujhe dal roti khana hai. I want to eat dal roti. It's all related to eating and we keep adding one word to I like it. it. One, one new word. I want to eat a hot fudge sundae. Mujhe hot fudge sundae khana hai. Okay, one more, one more share. Thank you. There we go. But my share in my opinion, I just want to clarify, do I actually understand the language level? Clarify, okay. okay. 
So what I we will think is that, 我没有做功课 I did not do my homework. Uh, I'm too. 我忘,我忘了做功课 I forget to do my homework. Uh, 我太忙了所以我没有做功课 I'm too busy, so I didn't do homework. I'm sick. Uh, 我病了所以我没有做功课 I'm sick, so I did not do homework. I had Wait, basketball so, practice. Yeah, I yeah. forgot my homework. Yes, well, yes that's powerful. Okay. That's very powerful. Okay. Uh, all the different excuses. The dog ate my homework. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, all different excuses okay. uh, for not having your homework. In fact, I even had one of those uh, as an example. Oh, okay, but, great. Um, so this is. So we're on the right track. Absolutely. Great. On the right yeah. Track. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's let's go on to very similar the idea of um, of a language frame. And um, so um, the frame is, is uh, not a whole chunk. Uh, it's where the, there is a chunk, but it's the same chunk, and the students fill in a different word uh, in, in each piece of the chunk. And this came out of a Spanish classroom. And, and um, uh, can you see what it is? What day is today? And yesterday was, today is, tomorrow is. And what is the date today? And I like the way she did that, where she can actually write it in. Uh, and down here, when is your birthday? And my birthday is. Uh, and uh, I see the, what color, mittens? The red mittens, so you fill in the color, okay? I see the green mittens, I see the brown mittens, and you see, so this is actually designed for kids to develop writing, but this would, it works in, um, in many ways. So uh, this could be a wonderful writing exercise that is accompanied with oral. So filling in that frame on a very, very basic level. And um, uh, I have some more frames coming later with some poet, poems. So let's, let's go take a look then at rhymes and poems. And uh, we have to switch for a moment over to what language do you think? Well, you only have your choice of Spanish or German. German. Yeah? Okay, so um, uh, goodbye, English. Okay, hello, German. Hello, Deutsch. Hello, Deutsch. Wir sprechen Deutsch. Wir Sprechen Deutsch, ja. Es nicht ist w. Wir sprechen Deutsch. Okay, so. Mm. Das ja. Oh oh, was haben wir hier? Wir haben ein Problem. Ein Moment, ein technisches Problem. Oh, ist nicht gut. Okay. So. Der Frühling bringt Blumen. Der Sommer bringt Klee. Der Herbst bringt uns Trauben. Der Winter bringt Schnee. Noch einmal. Der Frühling bringt Blumen. Der Sommer bringt Klee. Der Herbst bringt uns Trauben. Der Winter bringt Schnee. Ja. In Indianapolis gibt es Schnee? Ja. In Milwaukee gibt es Schnee? In Singapur gibt es Schnee? Nein, kein Schnee, ja. Yeah. Aber es ist heiß in Singapur, heiß, ja. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. Der Frühling bringt Blumen, der Sommer bringt Klee, der Herbst bringt uns Trauben, der Winter bringt Schnee. Okay, der Frühling bringt Blumen, Aha. Gut. Der Sommer bringt Klee. Der Herbst bringt uns Trauben. Der Winter bringt Schnee. Ah, der Winter bringt Schnee. Ähm, mh, was bringt der Sommer? Was bringt der Sommer? Klee. Äh, und was bringt der Winter? Schnee. Sag zu deinem Partner. Du bist intelligent. Ja, yeah. du kannst gut Deutsch. Mm -hmm. Was bringt der Frühling? Was bringt der Frühling? Blumen. Und was bringt der Herbst? Trauben. Hm. Und äh, wann gibt es Schnee? Schnee, wann? 
oh, so intelligent, so intelligent. Okay, so wir sagen auf Wiedersehen Deutsch, hallo Englisch, back to English. Um, how quickly would, it, would you learn the seasons in German? Pretty quickly, right? And what's cool about this is there's a cultural element in here, all right? Um, so the spring is, brings flowers, the summer brings clover, okay. But what does fall bring? Grapes, grapes for making wine. Okay, so when we think about fall, it's uh, usually pumpkins and, and uh, leaves and Halloween and, you know, all that stuff. Okay, and der Winter bringt Schnee. So just that idea of the rhyming uh, and the rhythm um, enters from the other side of the brain and it's very powerful for chunks of language. Now this is an authentic German rhyme, but you can certainly um, create your own. Um, So do you think you could say that word? Blumen. Think you can say that word? Trauben. Trauben. That word? Schnee. Schnee. And that word? Ah, oh, so intelligent. Wunderschön. Um, so uh, this is, um, uh, these are some pattern poems and they actually uh, are uh, frames, sentence frames. So the five senses poem, color, emotion, what it tastes like, sounds like, smells like, looks like. And um, so winter is something, it tastes like, it sounds like, it smells like, it looks like. Um, those ideas for building creativity even at the very, very simple level. And uh, this one is extremely simple. It's a contrast poem. And uh, I'll read it to you. Um, the sky is over my head. The birds are over my head. <laughs> the clouds are over my head. The ants are under my feet. And um, so it's just that simple idea. Three things and then the, the opposite. Um, this is um, based on the story of the little red hen, the little red hen who finds a, a grain of seed and um, runs into the lazy cat, the lazy dog, who don't want to help. And the pattern goes through the story. Anyway, um, let's read that one together. The red hen worked and planted the grain. The red hen worked and harvested the crop. The red hen worked and baked the bread. The dog, goose, and cat didn't work. Well, that one isn't quite as lovely as the other one, but it you know, still gives you, the, gives you the same idea. And um, an I am poem, I am, I hear, I see, I want, I am. I wonder, my, that, that might be a little difficult for the novice level, but uh, we could certainly adapt this idea. And um, here we are. So let's um, take a look, say goodbye to rhymes and poems, and, and take a look at chants and raps. And um, I'm going to um, have you do these with me. Can you do it? Okay. And uh, I want to say that chants and songs, are, and chants and raps and songs are similar and they have a rhythm, but a song has a melody, and a, a, a chant just has, excuse me. A chant has a rhythm, song has a melody, all right? So uh, uh, s let me just do this. <laughs> I'm the teacher, you're the student, are you ready? Okay, I want ice cream. I want ice cream. Want some too? Want some too. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry twist. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry twist. In a cone or in a dish? Okay, so um, now a point to remember is English has a certain rhythm and each language has its own rhythm, so you have to make sure that your chant goes with the rhythm of your language, right? Uh, and uh, that's important. And notice I was moving a little bit. It helps to move a little bit. And I'm not a natural mover, so I'm, I, I make myself do it to help. Um, this is, was a real chant that uh, little kids were learning to help them learn these words, and it's certainly cultural when you think about um, uh, uh, the, the, these words. I was in China recently, and somebody used kwai, and I didn't know what that was. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like bucks, right? Like the way we say, do you have a few bucks? Okay, uh, repeat. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. 
pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Five pennies in a nickel. Five in a Two, nickels in a Two nickels in a dime. Five nickels in a quarter. Five nickels in a quarter. And you'll know it every time. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Okay, now we're going to the doctor. Okay? Uh, I'm going, I'll chant it for you. I'm going to the doctor, I'm not afraid. Can you do that with me? I'm going to the doctor, I'm not afraid. I'm going to the doctor, I'm not afraid. Okay, I'll be the teacher. What's the matter? Your head hurts. Yes, my head hurts. I'm going to the doctor. I'm not afraid. I'm going to the doctor. I'm not afraid. What's the matter? My elbow hurts. Your elbow hurts. Yes, my elbow hurts. And obviously this can go on and on and on and on. Okay? And, uh, oh, we, let, let's end it. I'm going to the doctor. I'm not afraid. I'm going to the doctor, I'm not afraid. The last one, I'm hungry today. Uh, well, let's do it. I'm hungry today, I'm hungry today. I want to eat an apple. I want to eat an apple. Ooh, that apple tastes good. And I'm, let's do, I'm hungry today, I'm hungry today. I don't want to eat an orange. I don't want to eat an orange. Oh, that orange tastes bad. Yes, that orange tastes bad. So the idea is that anything can be chanted. And I tried this morning to come up with one off the top of my head. Um, and uh, I wasn't able to, but I did come up with a song off the top of my head, and I'll sing that in a moment. So guess what I'd like you to do for just a minute? You know, I'm going to ask you to make up a chant. Or, OK, why? Because if you do it here in this room, you might actually try it. Uh, or share it with your, with your teachers. So make up a chant about anything that you want to be teaching. It would take three or four minutes for this. And I'll come around and help you if you want some help. Okay, some of you got creative. So, uh, who's willing to share? Ah, we've got somebody here, very good. Okay, stand up please. Okay. Okay, I make a chant for my classroom rule. I make uh, the whole rule very simple. My rule one is respect teacher. My rule two is respect your classmates. The second, the third rule is uh, have manner and gentle. The fourth rule is dress up properly because school has school code. And my chant is 尊敬老师,尊敬同学,礼貌和气,穿衣得体. That's my chant. Oh. <laughs> it sounds better in Chinese. OK, someone, there's someone at the, <laughs> Olga is uh, recommending. <laughs> You're the cheerleader. Good job, too. OK. Okay. We have to change a little bit because uh, that's why, like, uh, when I was in uh, elementary school, my, 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 my friends always pick on me. Uh -huh. So, but I don't think it's really for um, should use for Americans, but you have to change a little bit. For okay. example, like this. Uh, uh -huh. okay. so, 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 means like, uh, uh, my face looks like a wrong ball. Because so when, when, when I was little, I was fat. And then oh. uh, uh, kick, kick the balls to the uh, shopping mall. And uh, <laughs> when I'm at the shopping mall, I want to buy purchase a ball. And the, the ball looks like uh, my, my face. Oh, OK. <laughs> I think kids would love that. Not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> okay. the one get the pick on. We have one. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, we'll share it with you. Saba, 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 Saba,
سبعة 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 هي سبعة 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 هي سبعة أيام الأسبوع سبعة سبت الأحد والاثنين سبت الأحد والاثنين الثلاثاء الأربعاء الخميس والجمعة سبعة سبعة هي سبعة أيام الأسبوع سبعة So this is how oh to Oh my goodness, teach. that was a long one. Yeah. Maybe it seems <laughs> long because I didn't understand no, it. You know what? When you don't understand, it seems like it's really long. No, actually, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, what uh, was it? it's seven, seven days of the week. They are oh. seven. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Seven days of the week. Seven, yes, and you repeat it. And, uh, It took me like a couple of days and they start repeating by themselves. But at first, I need to like explain because it's written from right to left and non -rom uh, Roman letters. So it's just different, like you like you're drawing letters, Perfect. you don't you know. But they learn it quickly from song. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Applause for everybody. And again, uh, I made you do it and try it so that you would actually try it because it's a memory, it flows right into the brain and it stays there. In fact, Sister Sebastian, remember me? Hour six at Pius XI High School, Latin class. Sister Sebastian is long gone, it was 40 years ago, but I still have. It's a bow bis bit and a bemus beat is bunt. It's a bam ba spot and a bamus spot is bunt. That's the uh, future and imperfect tense in Latin. And Sister Sebastian loved Latin, and she didn't know that, you know, I would still remember 40 years later, and I'll probably remember in my coffin, uh, because those chants, they stay with you. And uh, I know that um, I learned German and <laughs> grammar, and I still do aus, aus, bei, mit, nach, seit, von, zu. Aus, aus, bei, mit, nach, seit, von, zu. Those are the prepositions in German that take the date of case. So, you know, chanting uh, is very powerful. And uh, so is singing, and uh, the difference is with the singing that um, it's, um, um, it has a melody. And the, the songs can be culturally authentic, which we're not going to talk about today. We're going to talk about songs that you create to teach what you need to teach. And um, I um, actually uh, made up one this morning. We're at Star Talk, we're at Star Talk. Functional chunks, functional chunks. Building novice language, building novice language, and creativity, and creativity. <laughs> you want to? <laughs> so um, it isn't hard. It isn't hard. After I failed at a chant, I, I came up with, with the, the song. So now let's just take a look at, at this. Uh, oh, it's not Guten Morgen. Sag zu deinem Partner, Guten Tag, Partner. Yeah, so we have in here, Guten Morgen, yeah. Uh -huh. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Guten Nacht. Yeah, Guten Morgen, Guten Tag, Guten Abend, Guten Nacht. Oh, and noch, noch ein Moment. Uh, machen wir es noch einmal. Guten Morgen. Guten, Morgen. Guten, Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Guten, Abend. Guten, Nacht. Guten Nacht. Guten Morgen. Guten Tag. Guten Abend, Freunde. Eine gute Nacht. Freunde. 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 Du bist mein Freund. Freunde. Ja? Freunde. Ja. So. Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend, Freunde, eine gute Nacht. Uh, and then you can go on, eine gute, and you can go on with it. Let's sing it one more time. Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend, Freunde, eine gute Nacht. And so, uh, again, chants and, and songs, powerful, 
uh, not just the authentic ones, but also the ones that you create. Uh, and the kids will remember them. Um, these are just some songs uh, <laughs> that uh, have been made up. This is to the tune of We Will Rock You. May I drink water, water. May I go to the bathroom, bathroom. May I speak English, English. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so the idea is the songs and the chants will bring that language into uh, the kids. Um, what's this one? Uh, this is uh, the same tune. Yo me llamo Elena, Elena. Tengo, oh, oh, I'm not going to say how many old years I am old. <laughs> I'm, I'm young, and, uh, and so on. Uh, this is this old man, but it's all the parts of the body. Regarde la tête. I don't know French, so forgive me, those of you that do. Uh, does anybody know the banana boat song? Okay. Yeah. Daylight, come and me wanna go home. Don't put this on the video. <laughs> but anyway, whatever songs you like, whatever tunes you like, uh, are, are songs that, that you can use. So um, I was going to say make up a song, but I, I think um, uh, we will leave you since you did such a good job with the chant. Uh, or does anyone have a song that they can share with us that they have done with their class? No, we need to go on. You have one. Okay, let's go. The cheerleader is at work. Very good. Um, I made this sound this during the summertime, the star talk. We're talking about the weather. I made the sound from the London Bridge falling down. Okay, I was singing it, I was explaining it. Okay. Jing Tian Tian Chi Zemma Yang Zemma Yang Zemma Yang Jing Tian Tian Chi Zemma Yang Jing Tian Xue Tian then you repeat it, se session for different season. Jing tian tian qi zen me yang, zen me yang, zen me yang. Jing tian tian qi zen me yang, jing tian yu tian. Oh, fabulous. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. How is the weather today? Okay. Then we would uh, the repeat the question, zen me yang, how? The second time, then the kids can remember it. Thank you. So, um, I want to just say one word about game. Well, maybe I'll say two or three. Um, let's not have them be silent. Let's not have games be silent, OK? We have to always be thinking about the precious time that we have. So when kids are playing a game, there always has to be a language purpose. And, um, and make sure they're not at the one word level. So when I'm playing memory, for example, or concentration, and I'm turning over two cards, instead of saying um, apple, apple, Oh, the apple is red, the apple is a fruit, I like apples, I don't like apples. I don't care what you say, but say a chunk, okay? Uh, because it's dangerous when we only uh, work at the word level, because that's where we end up staying. And that's why kids never leave the novice level, because they're always at that word level. Uh, this, uh, which flag is it? It's, this one is just a question game. Uh, does your flag have this color? Does your flag have that color? And uh, if you get the color right, um, the, you take the card away until you finally figure out uh, what, uh, what the flag is. And um, it is uh, Saudi Arabia. But the idea that, you know, not just answers, but questions too uh, in, in the game. And uh, I'm going to just very quickly talk to you about a Gwen series uh, ac or an action series. Um, the Gwen series is um, like a story, um, but in, for example, in TPRS storytelling, um, there's a, a word, uh, there's an action for every word. In the Gwen series, there's an action for every sentence. And you can use it to teach a process. So I'm going to just do one for you in German, but I'm not going to do it to the, at the length that I normally do. I'm not going to um, have you do it with me, but I just want you to see if you get it. So das Käse, der Käse, und das Brot, ja? Der Käse, Wisconsin Käse. Ich komme aus Wisconsin, ja? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Und uh, das Brot. So um, das Käse, Brot. Käse, Brot, ja? Hm. Ich lege die Hände auf den Tisch. 
Ich sage, guten Appetit. Guten Appetit. Ich nehme das Messer in die rechte Hand. Ich nehme die Gabel in die linke Hand. Ich stecke die Gabel in das Käsebrot. Ich schneide das Käsebrot. Ich esse das Käsebrot. Mmh. Okay. Ihr macht die Bewegung, aber nicht sagen, okay? Ihr macht so. So, ich lege die Hände auf den Tisch. Mach das. Mhm. Ich lege die Hände auf den Tisch. Ich sage, guten Appetit. Ich nehme das Messer in die rechte Hand. Ich nehme die Gabel in die linke Hand. Ich stecke die Gabel in das Käsebrot. Ich schneide das Käsebrot. Ich esse das Käsebrot. Mm. Okay. Uh, did you get the, what we were doing? We were eating a sandwich in the German way, in the European way. We didn't switch our, our hands. And we ate an open-faced sandwich, which is culturally the way that it is, and so on and so on. Let me just show you some more Gwen series. Um, this is about making a fondue. Um, where you dip uh, uh, something into that fondue. You, often it's hot cheese. So um, let's, do you, do you act it out, please? I take the fondue pot. Oh, um, the way it works is first the kids listen. Mm -hmm. They go through the actions. And I would have, if I had had five more minutes, I would have taken you through that whole sequence I just did with you. And you would have been able to do it with, uh, do it because it has a logical sequence and it has many memory enhancers. So uh, in the handout, it explains how to do the Gwen series. It's very useful for teaching a process. OK, so I plug it in. I pour the chocolate. Uh, oh, this is chocolate fondue, excuse me. I put in some cream. I stir it. I smell it. I taste it. I say, OK. Uh, this is Alaska Fish Camp, and this was for culture you know, keeping the culture. This was uh, the Yukon uh, Koyukuk language. And um, so I catch the fish, I scrape the fish, <laughs> I gut the fish, I cut the fish, I stretch the fish, because it's the, the fish camp. Uh, uh, I hang the fish, I wait. I wait. I wait. I eat the fish, I say ane. All right, so uh, also for, for culture. What culture is this one about? Japanese. Japanese. Mm -hmm. And um, I turn on the music, I hear the music, <laughs> I move my hips to the right, I move my hips to the left, I turn around and I say merengue. Uh, okay, and what culture are we dealing with here? Okay, I like, I pinch it hard. Okay, and um, the Gwine series is very powerful, and uh, I think you will enjoy using it, and it's used, it works very well for teaching a, for teaching a process. Um, I want to, um, the second last chunk is um, pattern stories, and then the last chunk is partner activities, which um, uh, is very well documented in the handout. So uh, for sure, I want to um, uh, go with, into these repetitive and pattern stories. I have fallen in love with pattern stories because it's a powerful way to build language skills, and it's a powerful way to build literature. Not literature, literacy, reading skills. So there are different kinds of pattern stories. But in all of them, the scenes are repeated. Uh, sometimes um, it's a familiar sequence, like um, days of the week, numbers. Um, the Very Hungry Caterpillar is a book that is that way. On Monday, he ate one something. On Tuesday, he ate two something. On Wednesday, he ate three something. Um, a question and answer is another pattern. And that's, uh, uh, you see that in this story. Are you my mother? So you can already see the implications for language teaching, right? Because I'm talking about creating our own. Uh, repetition of a phrase, where the same phrase is repeated each time in the story. In fact, OK. 
Um, here's one. Let's see if you could get this one. Spieglein, Spieglein an der Wand. Wer ist die Schönste im ganzen Land? There's a little, little um, <laughs> clue down here. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And it's Snow White. Um, and the, a phrase that keeps getting repeated in the little red hen, the phrase is, not I, said the lazy dog, not I, said the lazy duck, not I, said the lazy, I forget, rabbit. <laughs> and the little red hen says, I will do it myself. A rhyme, okay. And uh, let's read that one together. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Uh, a chain or circular story is a story that starts and ends in the same place. And so it starts here at home and he has all, this is where the wild things are, all kinds of adventures and ends up back at home. But again, I'm talking here about you writing your own pattern stories uh, to, to fit into your curriculum and what your kids need. Um, this is an idea of, um, actually putting songs into print and making songs a literacy experience. And here is a songbook um, to the tune of This Old Man. All right, so this old man, he played one, he played knick-knack on my drum. Sometimes I hear your thumb. And then this old man, he played two, he played knick-knack on my shoe. And then the third one, he played knick-knack on my three, played knick-knack on my knee. And the idea of, of taking this oral language and extending it into literacy. And the cumulative story is one in which the, the first phrase is on page one, and then on page two you have the first phrase and then the next one. And on page three you have the, the first two phrases. So you keep saying the same phrase all the way through. Um, here's an example. So let's read it. And you already see the implications for language learning, right? Uh, for whatever it is that, that you want to do. And the question and answer pattern, oh, uh, this, this story I use a lot because it has so much in it. Okay, this is um, Spanish. Helena vive en Milwaukee. Uh -huh. La llama no vive en Milwaukee. Donde vive la llama? Donde? Um, vive la llama en Pennsylvania? Si o no? No. no. La ardilla vive en Pennsylvania. Vive la llama en China. No. no. El oso panda vive en China. Vive la llama en Antártida. No. no. Los pingüinos viven en Antártida. Vive la llama en Australia. No. 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 El canguro vive y brinca <coughs> en Australia. Vive la llama in India. You can come with me. Uh, no. El elefante vive in India. Vive la llama in Zimbabwe. No. No. La cebra. La, uh, la jirafa. El mono. El león. Y la cebra. Viven in Zimbabwe. Entonces, ¿dónde vive la llama? Vive in Peru. Isn't that nice? Because that, it's that, and you can just see how it could be so useful in anything, uh, with anything that you want to teach. It's got geography in it, it's got correct language in it, it's got uh, language chunks that are very useful. So um, this is one, uh, Ayano Suzuki is actually here at the conference. She and some other teachers from Shelby County are going to be presenting uh, part of an infrastructure grant tomorrow. But um, uh, I'm going to read the first part and you read the answer. Dog, dog, what food do you like? Uh huh. Monkey, monkey, what food do you like? <coughs> pheasant, pheasant, what food do you like? Monster, monster, what food do you like? <laughs> and this is a traditional Japanese story, uh, and uh, I just think it's great. So, um, and this is one that um, Dali Tan and a group of Chinese teachers did, 
And this is um, uh, the Chinese zodiac, but it's, um, it's mouse, mouse, what do you see? I see a uh, new, well, I didn't say that right, looking at me, and uh, goes on. Uh, new, new, what do you see? I see, and so on. Uh, uh, until you go through the whole zodiac, and I'm skipping parts, until we get to the end, and uh, it ends with, I see a panda looking at me. And I'm happy to share this, uh, this, um, this story with anybody. But um, I just wanted you to see um, the power of predictable stories. And just for a moment, let's take a look at the power for literacy, OK? And for those of you that have languages that kids you know, are struggling with literacy. So here we have, oh, you're going to be amazed at my Chinese here. <laughs> I am a horse. I am a farm animal. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. OK, I am a cow. I am a farm animal. I am a sheep. I am a farm animal. And um, there we go. We go through the animals. And what do you think that one says? Probably says we are all farm animals. OK, so that idea um, for, for building literacy, I think pattern stories can be very powerful for building literacy. Um, do you have an idea for your own pattern story? We don't have time. Just take a minute to think about, is there a story you could write that would, uh, that would help um, in your curriculum? Can you think of some ideas for a story you might write? If we could just go around the room and you could just uh, give me your idea. Yeah, we've got one right there. OK. to hop all the time and he does not want to sleep so he doesn't want to sleep he does not want to sleep so, so it's he, not a story necessarily for school no it's well no it's it not be, it's though. a bedtime story uh-huh so okay. it's a story you know to encourage sleeping mm. but you know from our <laughs> cultural perspective we like to add a little bit of a you know um, fear element in it okay so, um, so this frog just likes to hop uh, all night and wouldn't want to sleep. And he tells his mom that I can't sleep, so I'm going to hop out of my well and explore. Um, so the mother says that this is not a good idea to explore because it's really late at night. So, but he, he defies the mother. And he goes out at night. And so first he sees his monkey friend swinging by. And he asks him, where are you going? Let's go explore. And monkey says, no, this is bedtime. I need to go to my bed. But I love that. Where are you going? Let's go explore. I can see that working in any classroom, because we could be going anywhere, especially to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right? Yeah. <laughs> OK. And then you know, yes. it, it progresses. He yes. sees his friend, Butterfly, and he asks, okay. let's go explore. And the butterfly goes, no, this is bedtime. I need you to go. You have to share that with us. Absolutely. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. OK, we've got one minute left. So um, let's um, uh, just take a look at the last part, and uh, it's partner activities, uh, and basically the very simple structured kind, and um, the ideas where there's an interactive task where, uh, or an information gap. Oh, where is that? An information gap, meaning that I know something you don't know, you know something I don't know, and we have to talk to each other. So interviewing. Finding and giving information, following and giving directions. All these are simple tasks that are contain these functional chunks of language and in uh, solving problems and many others. So um, here we go, information gap activities. So in your handout, I have many examples of each one of these kinds of activities that can be done at the functional chunk level. Here's a jigsaw, and let me just quick show you on your table, but we, we don't have time. And I didn't think we would, but I'll just, you don't have to open. I'll show you what's in it. It's, a, it's a four sheets of paper, and one partner gets, um, um, excuse me, one group of four, each one gets a sheet, OK? And here's how it works. If you look up here, you can see. Um, so 
This is what it looks like. Now, um, student A reads number one. Okay, uh, can you all read number one? African man. Okay, but uh, then see each the each student has a different sheet, so they can't see each other's sheets, and they have to listen to what the other partner says. Okay, so student B reads number one. What is it? It has stripes. It has stripes. Student C reads number one. It lives in, lives in herds. herds. Student D reads number one. It ends, in it ends in A. What animal could that be? A zebra. <gasps> Okay, so that idea of a jigsaw, taking a piece of information and dividing it up into pieces of functional chunks of language is very, very powerful. And um, uh, many other, here's an um, interview in Chinese where there's lots of uh, help uh, there for uh, getting the answers to the questions. I think I even could do that. Uh, survey because I, uh, I could understand uh, because there's lots of scaffolds and supports there. Um, finding and giving information. Those of you that were with me at a year ago or two years ago when I did the plenary session, mm -hmm. I had you hide the bear. That's a very powerful activity because it can practice any kind of language that you need to, that you need to practice yeah. because that bear can hide anywhere. Here he is in Wisconsin. Here he is, ah, where is he? He's in Russia, okay? But he could be at the Taj Mahal. He could be in uh, Saudi Arabia. I don't know where he is. Um, okay, so the other thing that you have on your, um, on your table is what's in your sandwich. And uh, it's just simply an envelope and I'll hold it up and show you. It has these pictures cut out, and each partner makes a secret sandwich, and they have to interview each other. Lots and lots of language there, and it can be used many, many times. So um, let's, um, just remind ourselves that partner activities are a powerful way of um, adding functional chunks of language. Um, and uh, that's our last functional chunk that we're looking at. So here we are, the circle story. We're back to the beginning. Um, building proficiency uh, at the novice level from word, word responses to functional chunks. Um, communication begins with prefabricated purposeful language. And um, we talked about building proficiency by using some of those ideas. So let's look at the I can. I can explain the concept of functional chunks. Yes? OK, yes. can you show me? OK, I can use some types of functional chunks of language in my instruction or share it with my teachers. OK, your last task, tell your partner. Good. I have some ideas for using functional chunks with some of the global learners. <laughs> Some idea or two. <laughs> the end. Okay, the end. <laughs>